You probably heard about CSX.com's website, right? It stirred quite a fuss when Harry and Meghan gave it a makeover from using their royal title to posting a lot of empty stuff. It's all over the place. Now they're attempting to fix it up to match their image, but what they're doing doesn't quite match what they claim. Let's take a closer look in this video. Hello friends, welcome to the King YouTube channel. An analysis of Meghan Markle's speeches and interviews reveals a tendency toward generic and cliched messages. She often uses rhetoric based on popular opinions and prefers vague language over offering concrete insights or solutions. For instance, let's consider her involvement with SmartWorks. Critics argue that it's more about promoting her initiatives rather than addressing the actual needs of women seeking employment. Additionally, in her speech at South by Southwest, Meghan Markle referenced her personal experiences, such as facing criticism for her ambition, and portrayed them as universal societal issues. In doing so, she implies that her own challenges are shared by everyone. Some folks have dubbed Meghan Markle as Megan for a reason. She has a habit of making everything about herself, seizing every chance to talk about her own experiences. Take the topic of online violence, for instance. Megan couldn't resist sharing a story about being a victim of cyberbullying while pregnant, despite previously claiming she didn't use social media. It's a pattern she shares with Harry. They often play the victim card to garner sympathy. But it's a bit naive of Megan to think portraying herself as a bullied pregnant woman would make her more endearing, especially considering the controversy surrounding her pregnancy. Speaking of which, it's puzzling why Megan doesn't just admit if she used a surrogate instead of dancing around the issue. Megan always claims she fights for women, but her actions often center around herself. Surrogacy could have been a chance for her to positively change perceptions, but instead she chose to fake a pregnancy. Many have long supported surrogacy, so why the need for deception? It seems pregnancy was more of a trophy for her, fueling her fabricated stories and victim narrative. If she had been honest, it could have earned her more empathy. But instead, she's been accused of being manipulative, narcissistic, and even abusive, Ironically, she blames others for the very thing she's guilty of, while her fans sometimes resort to abuse and bullying. Critics, including Princess Catherine, have raised concerns about Meghan Markle's behavior. Meghan herself once said that women are often the harshest critics of other women. I can't help but wonder if she remembers saying that while she presents herself as a feminist. If you were to ask me who exhibits the most hatred towards women, I'd have to say Meghan Markle. Just look at her relationship with her sister-in-law, Princess Catherine. Remember that event where both Catherine and Meghan were present and Catherine was pregnant? Meghan couldn't hide her disdain, her jealousy was palpable. Then there's the incident with the lip gloss, where Meghan tried to borrow Catherine's and made her feel uncomfortable when she declined. It's understandable that Catherine, especially while pregnant, wouldn't want to share her personal items with someone she barely knew. Meghan's behavior towards Catherine was truly appalling. It wouldn't have been appropriate for Catherine to share anything personal, even if Meghan had genuinely needed it. So when I visit their website, it all feels like a facade. It lacks substance and authenticity. It's no surprise considering Harry and Meghan have already shown their vulnerabilities. They lack depth and knowledge in many areas and aren't as clever as they try to appear. Meghan seems clueless about cultures outside her own and lacks empathy, while Harry often comes across as immature, relying on Meghan to guide him like a child. Who does he think he is, really? Just an ordinary person, yet he carries himself as if he's superior to everyone else. He constantly lectures us on how to live our lives. I recall the incident when he and Megan were addressing parents of children lost to suicide, discussing social media's role in protecting kids. When Harry was asked a question, his response left much to be desired. After years in the public eye, he still struggles to answer basic questions without coming across as foolish. Frankly, it takes a fool to have chosen to marry Meghan. Family and friends had warned Harry about Meghan's unsuitability for marriage, but it's hard to heed advice when you're unwilling to listen and learn. Meghan's behavior comes off as foolish, spoiled, and even spiteful. Despite these warnings, Harry chose to marry her, and now it's clear that Meghan's behavior is irrational and disrespectful. Regardless of who they are, anyone stepping into a role that demands dedication and preparation should pay attention to their conduct. Meghan's lack of understanding about the royal family and her apparent disregard for the responsibilities of being a prince's wife are evident. While she may not have had as much time to learn and adapt as Princess Catherine did, Meghan still failed to make the effort. Meghan had numerous opportunities to learn the ropes of being a princess and a lady. 
Harry's former butler now offers similar classes, which could have been invaluable for her. There's no shame in seeking such guidance. Take Queen Mary of Denmark, formerly Mary Donaldson, for example. She invested in etiquette classes as her relationship with Prince Frederick progressed, and it proved worthwhile. Meghan could have done the same if she had been open to learning. She had ample support available, yet she declined assistance, even turning down help from Nana Kofi Tui Ankara from Ghana, allegedly because of his race. It's not hard to see why Meghan's life is now in disarray. Meghan claims to embody various roles like humanitarian and feminist, but there's a clear distinction between genuine altruism and mere showmanship. Many find her brand of feminism distasteful and self-serving. Ironically, it's often women who prioritize family over a high-powered career that face the most judgment from feminists like Megan. There's a stigma attached to women who choose to focus on raising children rather than chasing corporate success. Women tend to be more critical of each other in this regard than men are. Women indeed have the right to make their own choices, which is a fundamental aspect of feminism. The criticism directed at Megan stems from the contradiction and hypocrisy evident in her actions. It's hard to trust someone who consistently lies and acts selfishly. Unfortunately, this seems to be something Megan fails to grasp. Building trust is essential, ensuring that her presence in public isn't met with skepticism. Megan often seems to buy her way into events, which is puzzling. Take, for instance, her discussions about motherhood despite the absence of visible children. Whether these children exist or not, if Harry and Meghan truly wanted to shield them from the public eye, why do they film other people's children during school visits and share the footage online? These kids deserve privacy too. Why does Meghan always preach about uplifting and empowering others when her actions suggest the opposite in real life? It's time for her to stop pretending. Her true nature is apparent to everyone now dark and self-centered. All her speeches revolve around herself, showing little regard for others. It's clear she's only interested in attention, money, and fame. Frankly, she's become rather dull. We don't need fashion advice from someone who can't even dress herself, especially when our appearance doesn't define us. Women don't want Megan as our spokesperson. Megan often misuses words, and her comments about archetypes in the situation in Rwanda are prime examples. Her choice of words, like amazing and astounding when discussing such serious matters like genocide, is deeply troubling. Did she even show respect for the graves of the over 800,000 Rwandans when she visited? It seems she pushes an agenda that suggests anything done by women, specifically herself, is automatically superior to when men do it. Megan portrays herself as the savior, claiming she's here to help us all because she's so great and wonderful. It was this supposed savior, this self-proclaimed amazing humanitarian who captured Harry's heart, or rather tricked him. Megan often refers to Suits as her show, but let's be real, she wasn't the star. Her screen time averaged about 1 minute and 30 seconds per episode over 7 or 8 years, hardly a leading role. By the time she set her sights on Harry, she had been written off the show with no promising offers in sight. Megan's screen presence simply didn't leave a lasting impression, which is why not even Harry knew who she was initially. He had to resort to Googling her during their engagement. If it weren't for Harry, Megan would still be completely unknown. He essentially turned her into a successful opportunist, and then they fled from the royal family only to criticize and betray them. It's absurd that Meghan still insists on using her duchess title while harboring hatred toward the family who bestowed it upon her. Meghan has undoubtedly been one of the royal family's worst disasters in recent memory. She's nothing but a disgrace. If I ever met Harry, I would tell him that he owes a public apology to Britain and the royal family for tarnishing their reputation for the sake of a classless woman who doesn't even love him. Hasn't he realized that since they got together, they haven't achieved any real success? It's baffling that he can't see that. It seems the only thing Harry and Meghan have succeeded in is tarnishing their own reputations. Since their departure from the royal family, they've been constantly changing tactics because nothing seems to work. Their attempt to negotiate becoming part-time royals fell through, so they opted to leave and then proceeded to attack their own family. They did manage to secure lucrative contracts and make a lot of money by selling out their families. However, they soon realized that the public was no longer buying into their falsehoods. So they shifted gears and decided to stay silent, letting their allies do the talking. Figures like Oprah and Scooby-Doo Boozy, who were once allies in their grift, joined in attacking the royals, particularly poor Catherine, the Princess of Wales, but not everyone was fooled. Most people could see through their schemes, recognizing this as just another example of their deceptive tricks. 
Harry and Meghan are now attempting a new strategy, acting as if they've stepped back from the spotlight. They're portraying themselves as focused on hard work and charity, but it's hard to believe. We only hear bits and pieces of information leaked to the headlines, like Meghan's concern over Princess Catherine's diagnosis or Harry's desire to return to the UK, or Meghan's plans to photograph lentils and beets. It's evident that they're the ones spreading these rumors no one else is leaking this information. The grifters are using charity as a cover for their own agenda, and their website is clearly a facade for their shady dealings. When I read the nonsensical word salad written about Megan on the website, I can't help but wonder if this is the same Megan we know. How does she qualify as influential in any way? Who exactly is she influencing? I struggle to identify what she stands for besides herself, and she only manages to embarrass herself every time she speaks, thinking she sounds intelligent. With that smug grin on her face, she's only ever succeeded by riding on the coattails of others, people doing the real work. Take her new brand, for example. How many other brands has American Riviera Orchard copied? She's incredibly rude and seems to believe that her ideas are the only ones destined for success. Another issue is the topics Megan chooses to address. It feels like she's stuck in the past discussing issues that were news in the 60s. Her speeches lack substance and are filled with fluff. It's absurd for her to pretend to empower or uplift women after treating Princess Catherine and Buckingham Palace staff so poorly. She's been a vicious bully to her own sister, Samantha, her employees, friends, Charlotte, Catherine, and even the late queen. These are the women she's mistreated and betrayed. I'll never forget the horrendous Oprah interview that aired on March 7, 2021, where Meghan seemed to take a jab at her sister-in-law, Catherine, by referring to her as Kate. This was an insult as it diminished Catherine's status as William's wife and future queen. Furthermore, Meghan blamed Catherine for not defending her or urging the palace to quash the story about who made whom cry at the dress fitting. Meghan isn't an advocate for women, a feminist, or a visionary. While it's fine to point out societal issues, she rarely offers solutions. Her speeches are sprinkled with buzzwords like authentic and organic, and she talks about looking at things through various lenses before curating something, but often it's unclear what she's actually trying to convey. Remember when Meghan claimed she had to give up her career when she married Harry? That's not true she was written out of the series. Unfortunately, Harry seems to believe all her claims. Meghan didn't sacrifice her life for Harry because she didn't have much of a life in Canada to begin with, especially after losing her role in the series. What career is she referring to? She was being let go from a show that most people hadn't even heard of. Many online are calling out Meghan for being a fraud. She's just not very likable, and her public behavior is often ridiculous and extreme. While some find her entertaining to watch and discuss, it doesn't mean they actually like her. If Meghan is considered one of the most influential women in the world, then it's concerning for our society. If Meghan truly wanted to be a humanitarian, she'd need to demonstrate some basic decency, respect, and a willingness to listen and learn from others. Take the late queen, for example, she brought out the best in people she met because of how she treated them. It's not complicated if you have good character, but unfortunately, Meghan falls short in that department. Let's be honest, she didn't have much of a career. She had a small role in a cable TV show. She was clearly seeking a wealthy partner to marry, and after a few failed attempts, she finally found her prince. It's telling how she refers to Harry as my husband as if people don't know who he is. This narcissistic trait is hard for her to hide. It's as if she needs to assert her ownership over Harry, who gave her the title for her personal business purposes. Despite efforts by the late queen to prevent it, they've violated the agreement, flooding the web with cliches. But Meghan isn't as inspiring as she claims to be. Who does she inspire? Liars. Those who want to abandon their families. Victims? Bullies? Especially women? She's notorious for interrupting others and willing to trash anyone for a quick profit. And the sad truth is, she does it all without any finesse, it's just empty word salad. Megan could have had it all fame, love from millions worldwide, if only she could have kept her ego in check. How dare she claim to empower women and champion feminism on that ridiculous website. This is the same person who bullied her staff, spoke poorly about her sister-in-law, and even mocked the late queen. Just hearing her speak is torture. She's always contradicting herself because she's a hypocrite. So please, Megan, spare us your insights. We don't want to hear them. Everything she does is for her own benefit, including this website with her own badge on it. I bet Harry was surprised when she pushed him aside. Why is Megan still claiming her title as Duchess of Sussex on the website?
I thought they were ready to leave it all behind, to be just Harry and Meghan financially independent and not reliant on their royal connection. Yet everything they have still depends on that connection. Without Harry's family, they'd be nobodies. Meghan seems to believe she earned her royal position, making her superior to everyone else. She expects everyone to agree with her as if she's some brilliant overachiever. But no matter how hard they try, they can't fool anyone. They're not royals and they can't live in this fantasy. Meghan should have stuck to acting, or maybe not even that, considering how fake she comes across. She's out of touch with reality. It's interesting that Meghan Markle talks about ambition. She certainly has some ambition, I'll give her that. But what success has Meghan achieved on her own? How can you call it ambition when you cut off parts of your family just because they're not the right skin color and then proceed to trash your husband's family too? That's not success in my book. Success is when someone achieves a goal through hard work and earns it. That's something neither Harry nor Meghan can claim. They like to use a lot of fancy words on their website, but it's just like them filled with lies and hypocrisy. Clearly, they can't let things go as evidenced by their demotion on the official royal website. So it looks like this is the only spot online where we keep talking about these folks, and that wraps up the video. Now, what do you think about Harry and Meghan's website? Join the chat by dropping a comment. If you're on the same page as me, feel free to comment, and if not, share your view so we can understand better. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it. It means a lot. And make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop about our newest videos. We'll be back soon. Thanks for tuning in, and see you next time.